In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make stitches on a piece of cloth or something like cloth. I'm using Blender version 2.91, and this is aimed at somebody with a little bit of experience with Blender. It's definitely not for absolute beginners. I'm going to assume you know how to do most basic stuff in Blender, uh, but uh, I'm not going to move too fast, so it's, it's still beginner friendly. I do have screencast keys on, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing over here. I'll narrate most of it, but uh, if there's anything I forget to mention, just look over here to see what I'm pressing. Alright, so we're going to make uh, just some basic stitches on a very basic mesh. This is by no means a complex model, it's a very basic model. This is just to kind of show you the procedure or the concept behind an easier way of doing this. Um, you could do this on a more complex mesh, and in a later video we'll do it on a car seat headrest to show the same kind of concept applied to a slightly more complex object. Alright, so take a mesh like this, uh, go into edit mode, and start with an edge loop right where you want your stitches. If you don't already have an edge loop there, put one in and make sure that uh, you have an edge loop right where you want your stitches to be. In this case, it's going to be right here on this very basic piece of cloth that we've got here, okay? So you're going to select that whole edge loop, hold Alt and click on it, and then we're going to duplicate it. Shift D, right click, P to separate by selection, click selection, and now we've got a separate a separate object there that's just where we want our stitches to be. I'm going to rename this. You don't have to rename this. I just like to do this. I'll call it a cloth stitching path. And then we need a stitch, which I've already modeled. You can see this itty bitty little stitch over here. I'm going to zoom in on it and you can see it's a really basic model. It is nothing complex. Uh, you can model a stitch like this. You can, If you know anything about modeling in Blender so far, you should be able to model a real basic stitch like this. Okay, I'm going to subdivide it, and if you don't already know, a quick way to add a subdivision at level 2 is to just hit Control and then the number 2 on the number row uh, on the left side of the keyboard. Left side of the keyboard. you got to be in object mode to do that, though. Control 2. Okay, not, not on the number pad, but control 2 on the left side of the keyboard. That quickly adds a subdivision of level 2. Alternatively, you could go to the modifiers, add a subdivision surface, and then change this to level 2. Uh, but just hitting control 2 is just a nice quick way of just jumping right to that, okay? So now, back on our mesh object, uh, you want to get that stitch to follow that path, right? So we go to our stitch, we add a modifier, an array modifier. You've probably dealt with these a little bit. It's how you take any one thing and make an array of that one thing. We raise the count up a little bit and we start to see a row of stitches here. Obviously they're not where we want them to be. How do we do that? We add another modifier, a deform curve modifier. And that curve is going to be our cloth stitching path, which right now is not a curve. It's still just a mesh object. But to convert it to a curve is very simple. We go to the object menu, go down to convert to curve. Now, if you go to, into edit mode, you can see that is now a curve. You can edit that curve by adjusting these vertices and... Uh, and you can edit the shape of the curve. In this case, we want this curve to stay exactly as it is. Now, if we click back on the stitches, we want those stitches to follow that curve. So we can click the eyedropper under Curve Object, and then just click our cloth stitching path. Now, those stitches are going to follow that path. And as we raise this count, you can see them kind of sew themselves right around. The, the magic of this still amazes me. It's a simple thing, but even after blending for a long time, uh, this just still fascinates me. This is one of the many things 
that Blender can do for you to just make your life easier. And the first time you do this, you'll probably just play with this and just kind of watch this thing stitch itself and just kind of say, that is amazing. And it is amazing. So depending on what kind of look you're going for, you might want these stitches to be uh, spaced out further or closer together. Sometimes a slight gap between the stitches can give it kind of a hand stitched look. To do that, you can change the relative offset on this X value. You can just raise that up and you can get these to be a little further apart. If we hold shift while we raise that up, we can do it in smaller increments. And uh, something like that looks pretty good. We've got some overlap here because the count is too high. So we'll just hold shift, bring that count down. And then you can see we've got just the amount we need. Gap right here is a little too much. We're going to close that gap up by adjusting the stitch in edit mode. Also, I don't know if you can see this or not here, but these stitches are kind of hovering below the mesh. And uh, I kind of want them to be up a little higher. So if we, if we go into edit mode and we change the position of this original stitch relative to its origin, we can get those stitches to be more exactly where we want them. The problem is you can't see what those stitches are doing on your mesh here unless you click this button to display the curve modifier in edit mode. When you do that, now you'll be able to see the stitches along there while you uh, adjust its position in edit mode. So you can grab this and move it on the Z axis and it will move the position of that whole array. So you can get more or less of that stitch above the mesh, uh, above the visible part of it there. I kind of want it like that. That looks pretty good. And now to fix this little gap over here, I'm just going to make them slightly bigger. While in edit mode, I'm just going to press S, hold shift, and just scale this up a little bit to close that gap. And that looks good enough. And uh, that is it. There you go. You've got stitches around a path. There's a lot more complex ways that you can implement this. There are a lot more complex objects to do this on, but the concept will always be the same. Cut an edge loop in, duplicate that edge loop, convert it to a curve, use an array modifier and a curve modifier, set this to the curve, and then make any adjustments. Now, here's a little troubleshooting. If you have problems where uh, the stitching path is just really out of whack, you, you can see here, if you move this on the y-axis, it's not at all where you want it to be. So if you run into this kind of thing, if you have uh, this going on, once you put the modifier in, just take a close look at where your stitch mesh is in edit mode and move it closer to its origin and it will fix itself. How it displays on the array is going to be affected by that origin. The easy way to snap it right to the origin is press Shift S, move this cursor to selected. Oh, no, let's go out of edit mode. Let's do this again in object mode. Shift S, cursor to selected. Oh, scratch that. Uh, one second. Let's not display that. We just have to have that selected. Okay, cursor to selected. Third time's a charm. And then, uh, with it like this in edit mode, now press Shift S and take the selection to the cursor, but keep in mind to use keep offset. If you don't use keep offset, it's going to put all the vertices on the origin, like all overlapping each other. You don't want to do that. So do Shift S, selection to cursor, keep offset. It's going to put that thing right on the origin, and then you're going to have to just, in this case, move it back up a little bit uh, because it put it in the center of the origin. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully that helps you if you have any issues troubleshooting. Keep in mind to keep that mesh near its origin uh, to make everything straighten out, and that's it. I've got a little texture on this cloth here. 
and uh, you can see that looks a little better. And that's what the cloth would look like with the texture on it and some lighting and it's uh, it's pretty decent. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. Never stop blendering. Whatever challenges or hurdles you're encountering and, and frustrations trying to figure out how to do something, just scour YouTube, scour Google. You will find an answer. Maybe you have to do a little trial and error after you poke around to get something to work. But there is always a trick and there is always a way to get something to work. Just never give up. Keep blending anything you can envision and make your dreams a reality. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, I'll be doing all kinds of different tutorials, uh, some stuff for absolute beginners, and uh, some series on creating real nice scenes. So thanks very much for watching, and uh, keep up the great work. Have a great day.